what we have here, episode two, zero. That's right, episode 20, and we're back by the phenomenal MVP of last season, David Leathers. Um, the co- you're the coach GM of the Dublin as well, is that right? Yeah, that's right. So, uh, been getting some good help as well from Mr. Rock Steele, so shout out to him. But yeah, definitely uh, all things Dublin for sure. Oh, awesome. Well, Leathers, uh, appreciate you hopping on. You're no stranger to the show. We uh, always appreciate when you're able to fill in for our beloved co-host. Um, and uh, I know that there's some cool things in your life. Tell us about the um, yet a new addition to the household. Isn't that right? Yeah, it's true. So about, I think it was back in April, we got, uh, I have one cat already. And if for people that watch the Pets channel and goals, you might have seen pictures. But yeah, we added a kitten as well now. So we've got, um, you know, a little, a little ball of fur to keep my, our older cat on his toes. So that's, that's what's been going on around here. Oh, excellent. And where, where'd you get the kitten from? Uh, so we got it actually at a cat shelter a uh, couple hours. No- I'm in Wisconsin, but a couple hours north of where we live in Wisconsin. And um, yeah, just a cat that needed a home basically. And so it's, it's been uh, kind of gratifying. Uh, we talked about it a little before before this started just like, to sort of, uh, you know, give an animal that needed a home, like a nice home and, um, you know, a good quality of life. So, yeah, excellent. You know, um, it, we should uh, definitely throw in the link to whatever shelter you you know, you've reached out to, to, you know, who else might be in the, the Madison area? Uh, you know, there was a lot of people in the Indianapolis area. There could be a, quite the community in um, Madison as well. So um, great. We, uh, you know, appreciate you, you hopping on. We've got a, you know, not a super jam-packed agenda for you today. It's actually pretty straightforward. We're in the heat of things when it comes to the, um, you know, the playoffs um, approaching on the horizon. So, you know, let's start off things with looking at the standings. Um, we've got uh, up here, um, as you can see, oh, it looks like I have a cell highlighted in my screenshot. That's um, that blue box around Boston for 29 has no significance, but shout out to them from jumping from last place to 12th place holding a you know, 29 points, but we've got uh, Alaska at number one tied with uh, Jacksonville at the top. And we actually, um, you know, at the bottom, we've got SDR, Honolulu, Melbourne. Um, any like teams popping out to you here, uh, Leathers? I know we've got a, a, a more finite breakdown of who's actually contending for playoff spots, but like where we are right now, is there anyone on here that kind of, you know, piques your interest? Yeah, I, I think I'm just so interested to see the how the, the sort of playoff race for, for those last. I mean, there's a bunch of teams that are sort of clumped up there um, around Tennessee. And I know it's it's sort of broken down by conference, right, the, the individual races. But I'm, mm-hmm. I'm really just so curious to, like, see how that all goes. Yeah, I guess you've got a lot of the usual suspects up towards the, towards the top. And, like, those – I mean, the, like, these, these playoffs, I think, are just going to be really fun because a lot of teams have been – um, playing like, you know, I feel that as the season has gone on, most, most everybody has gotten better. I would, I would almost say so. Um, I, I just think the playoffs are going to have a ton of like high octane matchups. Um, and then, yeah, I'm, I'm so curious to see, uh, the race over these past, uh, final few weeks of the season. Yeah, absolutely. It's, you know, a very competitive time and a lot of talent is emerging. You know, unfortunately there are only X number of, uh, spots to kind of fill people into. So, um, let's uh, hop over to the minors real quick before we go over to the um, points for the playoffs. Uh, but as you can see, there hasn't been a significant change when it comes to the minors. You've got uh, Iceland. Uh, I think Vancouver did move up to number three. Um, so, you know, shout out to Ironsides for that uh, coaching effort over there. Um, do you have Warsaw, unfortunately, at the bottom, holding it down with 26 points. But the impossible is not improbable. You see, Warsaw did have a uh, double-digit win streak in the previous season that extended into the playoffs and the championship matches. So it is not without question that Warsaw couldn't put together a, uh, you know, win streak that could compel them to get into the playoff positioning. 
but this is kind of where things are today. Uh, want to shout out to the competitive nature of all the teams this year. I think this is a demonstration of how this, um, you know, kind of new drafting system has put in uh, a phenomenal amount of talent into the minor system. And this has become, uh, you know, what the result is for this season is a, a really challenging um, and uh, competitive, you know, slate of teams in the minors that's, that's represented. No, hundred percent. That's that's definitely been um, for the the game, the minors games I've seen this season. That's absolutely been true. And I mean, you can see it. I mean, after Iceland, who's you know, shout out to them. They've been they've been playing really well this season. But after them, you got like three teams there, um, right? They're all within like a point mm-hmm. of each other. So it's yeah, that's gonna that's gonna be a close, just as close and competitive as the as the majors are. I think. Yes, absolutely. So we'll see. There are what you know, three weeks left. Is that right? We're in week 10, 10, 11, and 12. And there might be, yeah. are, there, are there 13 weeks for the minors? Forget. That's a good, yeah, that's a good question. I, I think it's, I think it mirrors ours. I see. Hang on a second. I'm just going to look it up real quick. And uh, so there's, oh, okay. There's actually 14 weeks listed on the schedule oh, for the minors. 14. So. Okay. Well, there we go. So a lot of a uh, lot of road to be paved ahead. Um, mm-hmm. so, so let's move on over to the um, points to the playoffs. So this is a breakdown of the teams that in the pros that are either uh, or that have either clinched a spot in the playoffs or for the playoffs or are in contention. And you can see uh, we've. Utilize color ranking. There is green to indicate the strongest color green um, indicates that a playoff position has been clinched, whereas the lighter shades of green represent that they are in contention. They basically, if, if things keep going this way, they'll have a spot. Those in yellow represent teams that are fighting for a position but don't have one yet. So that's kind of the breakdown here. You were talking about, you know, clumps of teams. I think the 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 biggest clump I, I'm seeing right here is Albuquerque, Rome, Florence, San Diego that are all fighting for the playoffs. Um, is that kind of the one you're you're looking at right now? Yeah, I think that's that's kind of what I was looking at is just being like super tight and you know there, there's so many teams in the mix there you know and there, it's it's so close that everyone I mean there's still uh, a lot of hockey left to be played in the season um, you know in the in the majors so um, all these teams have a have a good good shot at it or you know kind of control their own destiny so to speak um, yeah it should, it should be a lot of fun definitely um, those those are teams games which I would like to watch yeah absolutely especially if they've got bets going on I would you know participate visually um, mm-hmm. and. Uh, so, yeah, and there has been turnover. I know when we did this chart originally, we had been planning on recording this episode actually earlier in the week, and Rome was ahead. And now, you know, Rome has dropped beneath Albuquerque. So there's certainly, you know, by the time this gets released, which is hopefully later tonight, uh, who knows what, you know, the changes may occur. But um, the other, you know, kind of conference we're looking at is the one we've got four te- There's basically four slots and you've got five teams fighting for it and Jacksonville already clinched. Then we've got Las Vegas, Redwater, Florida, and then there's a pretty sizable gap between that and Tennessee. Now, if Florida were to lose every single game moving forward and Tennessee won every game, they could overtake Florida, but the odds really aren't in the favor here. So it's not as tight of a race as the other conference, but it's uh, still, uh, you know, a, an, an opportunity there for you know, or Redwater could lose all their games. You know, I think Florida won't lose all theirs, but who knows? Redwater might. Yeah, and uh, big, big respect to Tennessee as well. That that's a team that uh, we uh, we just just played them actually. Uh, Dublin did, and I think that they've just improved so much. And it's just it's sort of unfortunate for them that they're in that conference because if you look, if they were you know right there with Albuquerque and Rome and the rest of those guys, they'd be they'd be right in the mix fighting you know fighting for a playoff spot too. So. Um, yeah, big shout out to Tennessee. Much, much respect. Is it, isn't Gunny Gunny on Tennessee? Oh, he should. Yep, sure is. I feel like he he makes a good play pretty much every single game. Yeah, so. <laughs> and he's the coach of the ice. Is that right? Maybe to oh, to, I'm not to sure. be verified. I don't know. 
He's very involved, though, in a lot of leagues, so it would, it would not surprise me. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like the Iceland, the AC is Gunny. Um, oh, there looks like there's no coach listed, so maybe Gunny is the uh, acting ice coach. So not only, you know, doing well with Tennessee, but also, you know, making a sizable lead in the minors. All right. Well, that's pretty cool. So let's uh, let's move on over to our plays of the week. All right. Starting us off, we've got uh, oh, Muldoon taking it to the back of the net, giving a pass, taking one back, getting respect along the way. That's how it's done. All right. Love to see it. We've got uh, Mojo rising with a nice dish right here. Uh, tater slice, putting it home for the Vipers. Uh, just really love this uh this pass right here i mean he's he stops you know i'd imagine the uh you know flecks of ice are flying everywhere and he just has a very sweet like dish right there makes it easy oh yeah yeah what a you know that dish would be dessert on a you know a nine course menu excellently prepared and served up um all right so moving on we've got a, a fight coming on here now sometimes we feature fights and they're just, you know, bodies in a fight and we want to look at it. But this fight has a really spectacular ending. Let's watch this. He goes down. Oh, Oof. and that was it. Um, I don't know that we need to watch the whole fight again, but let's just say it ended with a big punch thrown. All right, moving on to the next one. Oh, let's actually just wait one second. And here it comes. Oh, okay. Ooh. All right. Brutal. <laughs> well, here we've got another uh, another Vipers uh, highlight. It's uh, Fiol. Uh, he's getting laid out uh, in this highlight, and he, still, he hits the goal. And this was big, too. If you look at the score, this made it a two-goal game with just two minutes left in the third. So, um, yeah, just uh, great, great job to sort of, uh, you know, hang in the play and make the shot, the cr crucial shot um, at, that, at that time of the game. They had that, that song about him, right? Like, it's Fiole. <laughs> Something like that. But that was... That's uh, right. <laughs> well, what a, what a great shot. I, I was really impressed with that one as well. All right. So moving on, we have uh, Hill passing it to... I don't know. Maybe Hill still has it. Solberg. Oh, and then Triple H comes in. I'm not exactly sure. Oh, the significance of this being it was an overtime. So this was an overtime winner. Game winner, yeah, very smooth, very smooth uh, shot right there. Pass a good, a good goalie and uh, twin screw as well. Oh yeah. All right, here you go. Oh yeah, and this is the this is a dragon. So you see TJR with the the big shot right there, big check behind the net, um, and then uh, they, they uh, take it back, miss it. TJR picks it back up and uh, just does a sweet backhand. Um, there's a lot going on in this sort of sequence um, that led led to that goal. Um, just exemplifies teamwork and uh, you know TJR with the the filthy finish for sure. And who threw that that check? I didn't catch I didn't catch that. Um, I don't know. I feel like I don't I don't know if Shane Knox is on the ice here, but he's the one on our team typically doing that sort of thing. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's a big hit. Yeah, it's kind of hard to see with these white on white letters, but um, yeah, shout out to that. That was really sick. All right, and moving on, next up, we've got coming down, Fowler. Fowler to Duncan. Oh, did you see that? Stone with mysterious psych psychosis powers is able to manipulate time and space to prevent pucks that should have gone in that crash against beams behind him. I thought this was a really spectacular save by Stone. That should have been in like a Marvel movie or something there. The, <laughs> yeah, supernatural things going on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we've got uh, it's a it's a Warsaw Warlocks highlight. Uh, trying to uh, see, so um, yeah, bringing the uh, puck down the ice gets taken away. They stick with the play. I do remember this was a little bit of a longer highlight, but yeah, they oh, fight. Yeah. You know. A lot of fighting going on. Lipinski coming away with it, and then just puts a couple dekes on the on the Tigers goalie and gets it in there. It's a really great, uh, yeah, just great sequence and and uh, great dekes to to get the goal. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was like bowling passes it to Vivieros. And uh, like you're talking about with the Deeks, I I like this because like it was unfortunate that the pass got like turned over, but then the Warlocks like still ground through it. And Lipinski, you know, pulling off some of those moves for being a bigger guy, like a power four. Oh yeah, very, very impressive. All right, and to sign us off, we've got Ferguson coming down. It is a shootout, and Ferguson scores. Unfortunately, um, Tokyo scored right after that, and then they scored again, and we lost the game. But it was still a pretty brilliant um, play. So, so those were our plays of the week. Well, Leathers, awesome time having you on. Any, uh, what are your Thanksgiving plans? Yeah, pretty pretty low key th Thanksgiving here. I think um, you know uh, my my immediate family in town. We're all going to get together and maybe do like a buffet out at a you know local restaurant and um, yeah, maybe hang out a little bit afterwards. But but nothing too crazy. Uh, should be uh, should be fun though. It's one of the few times, that even though we all live in you know live in the same city, pretty much. Uh, it's one of the few times per year we do all sort of get together. So that'll, that'll be a good time. Yeah. What, what about yourself? It's excellent. Yeah, I'm going to um, so in Chicago. There's this suburb called Deerfield. Um, and that's where my, uh, like aunt and uncle live. So I'm going out there with, uh, um, you know, with my family and, and whatnot. And we're having, yeah, Thanksgiving and bringing the dog and they have a dog. Uh, so the two dogs will meet for the first time and, you know, probably fight over the wishbone and, you know, one of them will break it and, you know, have a good year or whatnot. So yeah, I don't, awesome. yeah, yeah, excellent. Well, um, until the next time, uh, Wishing you and the viewers a good evening and a peaceful exit into whatever tranquility you desire. See ya.